Hello guys and welcome to my tutorial guide for the game Siege Survival Gloria Victus. And thank you to the developer of the game for sending me a free copy to review and to make this video for you guys. Thank you for watching the video so far. Remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell to help with the YouTube algorithm. Now back to the video. So what I'm planning to do is take you through step by step along the way while I play a new story, a new game and to give you hints and tips about best practices and how you can actually survive in this game because it's a survival game and obviously surviving is the key. And the first things first, uh, just check your options, make sure the volume's not too high and that your settings are all good. And um, yeah, and then you have the new story. Now, the way that these sort of games work is basically you have the main story. So here, it's right here. But then you have all these different custom modes, challenger modes, and so on. And you can even do it completely yourself. You can say what um, you want to have done and so on. But if this is your first start time playing the game, your first time and so on, and you really want to enjoy the game for the way it is, then I recommend hitting story. So I'm going to load up the story and once we're in the game and we watch the opening cutscene, we will be back. Now, throughout the game at the beginning, you're going to have pop-ups that will explain little things about the game, but I'm going to try and summarize everything as quickly as I can um, without the pop-ups. Okay, so the general controls are to move a character that you've got on your screen that's selected, use left click, as you can see you move them around. At the top right of the screen you can control the game time, so you can speed it up by pressing plus or you can slow it down by pressing minus. I really recommend to slow down the pace of the game while you're working everything out. And then to rotate the camera press uh, Q and E. Now, the whole point of this game is to survive after this bastion, this castle, this city has been ransacked and is continually being ransacked by enemies. And what you want to do is you want to salvage and build everything you possibly can to survive, but then also to help the soldiers of the bastion. So what I recommend you do, at least initially, is follow all of the opening tutorials opening quests because they will give you some really good context of what's going on and how to do the very basic things and i would recommend reading through the story because the whole point of these sort of games is to just get involved with the story like it gives you a reason as to why you want to help people do what they do so again uh, let's skip this and will we we will continue okay so initially they want us to perform the following actions. So prepare a warm wheel for him and find materials. So it's giving you a hint that this is what you want to do to collect resources. So when you see this hand symbol, it means this is where you can collect different types of materials to help you on your journey. Now, initially, obviously, the game's going to start out very, very simple. But in the future of the game, you're going to have to be very, very selective about what to pick up, how you're going to do it, what you need, and the order to build things as well. So um, as you can see here, we have some wood and we have some fibers. We need all of those, so we'll take them all. Um, and as I said, with time, you're going to learn what you actually need. So let's quickly go to the storehouse. We want, it says here, build a stump with a saw horse to chop wood into firewood. Okay, so the general way things work is you have these recipes uh, to build different things in the game. And I would say build things that you know you need. So, for example, don't waste resources uh, just because you can make the dryer to, to dry meat and dry vegetables and so on. Don't just make it because you're going to need the materials. Materials are very, very scarce. And also as well, with each one, it tells you the schemes uh, which are available. What that means is, is that what you can make when the facility is built. And then later on, 
you can upgrade the building. So we want to later build these new features, but we're going to worry about that later. But what is saying we need? We need 15 materials and six planks um, in order to upgrade and then build more stuff. So for now, we're starting with the basic. We want to build this. So build. Now, what this means, yellow is the area that will be attacked during a siege. Blue is protected. So if there's any projectiles, boulders, fire arrows, whatever, then um, the blue area is what you want. To rotate, you need to scroll up and down with the mouse. That's the way you turn it around and do it's gone. So if you scroll up, turn it this way, scroll down, turn it that way. And uh, I would recommend to try and maximize the space. So let me click that there. Okay, so my character is going to go now and he's going to uh, build it for me. So, and again, because I know this is the only thing he's doing, I'm going to speed up time. And then, while I'm making decisions about what I want to actually do in the game, I will slow right down. It's not just a case, like I said, if you really want to succeed in these games, it's not just a case of just do things as quickly as possible because you will, might and you probably will regret your choices if you make bad choices. Now also as well, each character has got different attributes that they're good at. So this person is good as a worker, so his capacity in his backpack is increased. So check out the perks of each character you get. Eventually you can have more than 10 characters working for you. So at the same time, but you have to discover them in the city, which I'll show you soon. Now, uh, each character as well has got different ailments which affect them. And you need to focus on the ailments to make sure that, for example, that they don't starve to death or they don't die of disease and so on. And it's emulated and it's highlighted right here at the bottom left. So we can see here, this is rested. So this indicator here at the bottom left is for like how rested are they and it will highlight if there are any problems this one is how hungry they are so if they're hungry it will actually say starving to death if you just don't feed them and then here is how thirsty they are here is how healthy they are um, how fit they are and then their general mood so if they become depressed or whatever so for now we need to chop some wood so what we do we click on that and we are then given access to the recipes available. So later on, uh, it does say clearly here that we have to upgrade this building if we want to be able to do more stuff later. And it's worth, even if you can't do the upgrade, it's worth checking what you will need eventually. So you will need eventually, you'll need an iron bar. Eventually you'll need a tool. So you keep in your mind, okay, where do I get those from? But either way, if you click on it, um, if you want to destroy the building, you literally just click here, dismantle, but uh, we'll avoid that for now. So stump, and uh, we want to make some firewood. So let's craft some. So it's making some firewood. So at the beginning of the game, generally just focus on, in the, the pop-ups on the top left, what it's asking you to do. Like, focus on it exactly. Don't try and uh, skip ahead and stuff like that. Because if you do that, you might and you probably will run out of resources. So like I said, it's a survival game. You want to do everything you can to survive. And you have a bare minimum of resources to, to get you to the end. And also as well, as the more you play the game, the more scarce things will become. Now, when you're in the town, when you find all of these items... Um, like, don't be scared to just take all of them because it will go straight into your storehouse. So in the town, in this little area, you have everything. But when you're out and scavenging at night, then you have to be selective. So as you can see, we get some food, some rotten food, and we can still use that to feed animals. Um, some materials and some fibers. So let's take all of that. So we found some raw food. So now it says here, build a fireplace. So again, let's go. We want to build the fireplace. Yep, we have the materials for it. Build. So, like at the beginning, you know, obviously it might seem very straightforward uh, how to do things, but it's going to become infinitely more complicated as the more you play, and you really are going to have to choose what you prioritize on. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to keep doing the tutorial missions until we have to go out at night and scavenge. Once we have to go out and scavenge, we will continue. Okay, so eventually enough time passes that it becomes nighttime. And during the night, if you're if you have one character who is up for it, then they can scavenge the city. And later on, you can actually send multiple characters to scavenge the city as well. So you have these options here. So scavenge the city, send them outside. What this is basically saying is that you can go to different places in the city, but initially you're only allowed to go to one area, which is this area. You have to unlock the other areas as you go. And what they recommend you do is take with you a torch, which I'll show you in a sec why that's a good idea. But let's start scavenging. Now, the first area of the city at night is really easy because there's no guards, there's no whatever. This pulsating circle around him is how much noise you're making. So if you're going slowly, single left click, then you see it's very small and you're going mostly quietly. If you double click, then you can see it's big and you are making a lot of noise. Now, while there's missions at the top left, make sure to um, do those as quickly as you can while time is short. And read through these and uh, decide what you're going to do. Okay, so I got some a bundle of arrows and some valuables. Okay, so now I have all these different things that I could loot. Uh, be selective. Do look around the city what you want to scavenge. Like I said, in the first area, don't worry about making noise because there's no soldiers around. Now, this is why we want the torch. You can see uh, when you have these sort of green auras, they can only be dealt with by burning them. So let's burn. And that will use the torch and the torch will go. But generally, uh, you can imagine with any anyone who's been a gamer for a long time, will know that usually when there's something blocking a path like this, then the rewards up here can be quite good. So keep a lookout for that. So we got some wood, some valuables, and... Okay, and we got some more stuff as well, which we can cook and repair later. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to look around this first area. I've got until daytime and then when the nighttime is finished and it's going back to day, I can click this button to quickly go back to the castle. So once we are back to the castle um, and we have chosen what loot we're going to keep and so on, then uh, we will continue. Okay, one thing to note before we head back is sometimes and very quickly your backpack, as you can see the bottom right, will get full. But let's say for example I really want these extra wood pieces. Um, what you could do is you could just leave something that you just don't feel you'll need for now on the rubble. It will still be there the next time you come here and then take the item you want. If you double click it will do all of them. If you click take all it will stack as much as possible. And if you drag it, it will drag the whole stack. If you want to move one item, single click. So, yeah. So, and like I said, it's not a case of take everything uh, because you have limited space. Take what you know you need. So, for example, I know that I need lots of wood at the moment So to build things. So that's why I'm sort of focusing on that for now. But later on, you will decide what you really need. Okay, so now it's saying return to the castle because it's almost daytime. And you see it starts flashing in the the top right. So when it starts flashing red, uh, before you go, uh, before it becomes daytime, click on return to the castle. Okay, so here we go. We're returning now. So start a new day. Now the goal essentially is, is to survive a week literally survive a week and then we'll see what happens so now as we can see i'm tired i'm hungry uh, thirsty sorry and i'm wounded so what i need to do is try and work out what like how i can solve these issues so for example i know that i now have clear water on the in the pantry so i can click this symbol 
So do check out what's available for you in the pantry. I'm now drinking. Done. Okay. And then I'm tired. And then also here I am wounded. So eventually you can make bandages. Now when it comes to food, you have ingredients like eggs and stuff like that, which are laid by your animals. You have chickens and pigs. Now what I recommend to do is rather than just eat them raw, if you can, cook them. But in order to cook them, you need firewood. So we can see here, we have an egg, but we don't have any firewood. To make the firewood, we know, or we can remember, that we can chop firewood here. And I'm going to craft exactly what I need. I'm not going to craft too many, because I don't want to run out of resources. So let's craft. Now, the other element to this game as well, which adds complication, is you need to take care of the bastion, which is the town. And support the soldiers so let's go now let's kick at the top bastion and we have reports about them defending so you could read that and then as you can see they are short on arrows you can see that they need armor they need weapons what the maximum is they have um, and the maximum amount of bundles of arrows at the moment is two and so on and then here you have one wounded which you can send bandages to help and it says how many sick or dead and ready to fight. And then here, <laughs> the issues. They have no arrows and also they don't have any melee weapons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send them <laughs> the arrows. That cures that issue. And I could send them food and stuff like that. But that will be required more in the future. So let's send that. So we're now going to do the sending. So it says here, send arrows to the Bastion. That's what we're doing right now. So, as I say, with a game like this, it's really important to take your time, at least at the beginning, to work out what you need to do and how you need to do it. It's a survival game. Every choice matters. Treat every single item you have like it's gold dust, literally, from the very beginning. Like, you might think, oh, I've got a lot of wood, I can do whatever. At no point do you ever have a lot of anything. It's a trick, basically. It's, and things will be more uh, scarce for you in the future by design. Especially when you have more mouths to feed, for example. So, we need to clear the debris. Okay, we now have another character that can help us. So now we have two characters. So we can issue them different commands. So, um, I'm going to get Flint to collect this rubble. I can then click tab and I'm now selected a second character called Bertram. Again, let's see what his perks are. He's good at fighting and he's good at building. Okay, so we could use Bertram to build, but for now, let's get him to collect rubble as well. That's why I said I recommend just slowing time down at, at least initially so that uh, you can really make sure you're doing things properly. And again, keep following the basic of what is required for the basic tutorial. Now, uh, something to note in the backpack. You can see here we have clean water, we have dirty water. Dirty water can actually be cleaned by upgrading the fireplace and cleaning it. It becomes a recipe later. So collecting dirty water is not a problem. Okay, so while he uh, Bertram is busy, let's keep clearing debris with Flint. They call. Go back to Bertram. And for now, I'm going to go to check on my animals. Check on my hens, check on my pigs. Later on, you'll have the ability to slaughter them if you need meat. But generally, I would say don't do that. Because you never know uh, what is going to be needed for the future. Um, so, okay, so we're, we're feeding our hens. So you have to keep your animals fed. You need to. Or they'll die. Simple as that. They have to be fed as well. So, okay. And then go back to Flint. So, it's important to maximize your time as well. To make sure people are always busy. Simple as that. Now, it says we need to make a bed. The beds are located up here. In the keep. And we, c we have no beds at the moment. But having beds is obviously a benefit to you. So, let's keep collecting debris with Flint. Let's go back to Bertram.
And of course, like this game very much reminds me of this war of mine. The music is depressing and so on. But it says here, build a new bed. We have more than enough materials, so let's build it. We're going to build one because one person is going to... We have two characters. One person is always going to be scavenging and the other person can rest. Simple as that. Then we got some medicine and we got some herbs. Okay, so let's go back to Flint and then let's collect this last resource. And he's building the bed. So we can see that Flint is actually now very, very tired. So uh, next time we're scavenging at night, we're going to let Flint sleep. And we're going to send out Bertram. Even though he has got less bag space, so be it. Like, I don't want Flint basically just uh, being s exhausted. Because if any of these attributes turn red, then they will be useless to the world. So, simple as that. Now, we can see that Flint is thirsty. So, we're going to get him to drink. And then... Actually, let's examine the well, because it's, it's needed for a mission. Okay, so read that, you're on thing. So we're going to get him to drink. I'm not thirsty, okay. Oh no, sorry, he's wounded. My bad. So let's uh, get him to use a bandage, which are stored in the storehouse. Okay, so that is... Um, healing, he's bandaged, but he needs to rest. So we are now going to send him to bed. So highlight the keep, click on bed, and he will go to sleep. And Bertram can do what is needed to do. So I should see a knight for clean water. Flint is wounded, make him make the banner, then put him to bed. Okay. So the game is trying to teach you what I'm teaching you already, but it's important to actually. Um, do it, essential, essentially. So, um, like I said, do not be tempted to just spend resources willy-nilly thinking that uh, you'll be okay in the future. Like I said, treat every single item you have like it's gold dust. Occasionally as well, you get these pop-ups in the bottom. So it says here, we got a new character in the castle. These pop-ups are to alert you basically to things going on. So... Uh, yeah, and now what we're going to do is we're going to wait till the second night time and then we're going to scavenge and we're going to rinse and repeat this process over and over again and it's going to become infinitely more complicated. We'll need to build a repair shop to repair weapons and armor to send to the front line. Uh, we'll need to, when we're scavenging at night, we'll need to avoid guards as we explore most of the city. We need to find the shovel to clear rubble and so on. So take your time with this game if you're if you feel that you've made some mistakes and you feel like you can't salvage what you, with the mistakes you made in the past just start the game again simple as that like i, I wouldn't see that problem like, i personally have restarted the game probably four or five times that's why i've reached a point now where i i play the game on the low speed setting to make sure i don't make any mistakes uh with each choice i make so yeah so that's it for this basic tutorial guide. I hope you have fun with this game. I love these sort of games. I really love them. I can lose many, many hours to them just like that. So let me know what you think. Um, are you going to play this game? And thank you again to the developer for sending me a copy. I really enjoyed it. And also as well, guys, what you can do is um, you can click my uh, link if you want to buy an Epic Game Store. But also you could try the free demo on Steam to see if you are interested in the game. So check them out. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. You can watch around the video over there. You can watch the latest upload down there. Or you can click down here to subscribe. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.